Hey everyone, it's Byron. I'm here to testify for Jesus Christ. Today is April the 17th of 2020. Last night I posted a video talking about I was having a new assignment. And last night I had two dreams and both of them have to do with the new assignment. So today's lesson is going to be about idols and idols of the heart. And I personally believe this really impacts the United States. Uh, let me go over the two dreams. In the first dream, I had 20 dolls. These dolls were the type that have plastic faces and their bodies are sewn and they have stuffing in them. They're, you know, pretty life-size type dolls. But inside each of the dolls, there were these little boxes. And these particular ones were used, these particular dolls were used for Christmas celebrations. Now, inside the boxes, there was... Uh, I, I took one of the boxes out and I looked at it. It was a box with batteries and had lights on it. So that if you flip the switch, the lights inside these dolls would do a light show. And then, as I said, they, they were there for Christmas. Such as you would put on a Christmas parade or make up a thing where there's songs playing and different light shows are going on. Um, this is what these dolls were for. I had possession of them, and I was glad that I had possession of them because I knew if no one else had them, they couldn't do all the pageantry of Christmas like is normally done. And and I think about Christmas. I think about Christmas in light of a pagan holiday. I mean, I think about Santa Claus and how far from Jesus Christ that has anything to do, you know, with anything. But anyway, I had these dolls. But the closer that it got to Christmas, the more I felt pressure to use these dolls in their traditional usage, such as, well, maybe I should let these people have these dolls back so they can do their Christmas parade and celebrate their God, Santa Claus, etc. But I, but I didn't. But I did go and take out one of the little boxes, turn it on, and I could see the light show, but it wasn't working properly. And then I woke up. When I woke up, I realized that I, because I was in possession of something such as is used in either it is an idol or it's in support of an idol, such as Santa Claus and all the different things that goes along with the celebration of Santa Claus, I realized <clears throat> by merely having possession of it, then there was a tendency on my behalf to feel like I might should use it. Maybe I should use it for myself or maybe I should use it for others. And at one point in time, as I was thinking about this, I realized I felt as if I owed it to other people to let them have their dolls and use them in their traditional Christmas celebration. So that was the first dream. <clears throat> and I apologize for clearing my throat. <laughs> Allergies and quite a bit of things. So then in the second dream, let me go to that. <clears throat> in the second dream, I was a manager and I was interviewing people. And I was near a boat dock. I was actually on the outside near a boat dock. It's here in my hometown. I was conducting one interview and had it complete. And then I left a sheet of paper on the little desk that I was doing the interviews at. And I walked away. <clears throat> but the next person that needed to be interviewed came up. When I joined them there, immediately they said, I'm not going to answer that question. And I was thinking to myself, wow, and I had not even asked a question yet. But what happened was I had left a sheet of paper on there. And on that sheet of paper, there was a symbol of the sun. And I realized that in this particular interview that I had just completed, I had asked the question or something had come up about the sun god. And this person that I was now interviewing had seen that. They didn't want any part of it, refused to answer it, etc. I did not complete that interview. I got up <clears throat> and walked away. And when I did so, I walked over to a person that was um, that w was working there. And I knew them. They were, we were like partners or whatever. And I said, I'm about to go get something to eat. 
And I told him, would you like for me to get something uh, for you? Or I asked him. And he said, no, I don't have any money, but don't tell my parents. And right after he said, uh, don't tell my parents, I looked and I saw people going up and down the river in boats and just really doing their thing. And then I woke up. <clears throat> As I thought about that, I thought about um, the symbol of the sun god. I thought about even how this particular guy had spent his own money on something besides food. And then I saw the boats and the pleasure, the things that were going on out there. I even thought about Moloch and how people sacrificed their children children to their Moloch sun god. <clears throat> so that they could have for themselves what they wanted or kind of like sun god worship and uh, fertility worship is let me do this so I'll be blessed. Um, and then they had kind of forsaken one themselves and two, maybe their families. And I thought about how many people are in debt trying to seek out pleasure. How many people have made an idol in their heart of pleasure? Well, I'm going to get me a house by the lake. I'm going to have me a boat. <clears throat> I'm going to give me an airplane. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And all these things seemingly have taken precedent over serving the Lord Jesus Christ. So that if you really examine them closely, they don't really have money. They owe money to have their pleasures. And those are idols. <clears throat> this desire, sometimes you can hear um, in Ezekiel, you'll hear about um, idols of the heart, Ezekiel 14. But then again, also, there's scripture in the New Testament that says their God is their belly. The God is their desires, their appetite, the things that they want. That's what their God is. They'll do. They'll say, like, for example, if they're, say, if they're a pastor and they're teaching a class, <clears throat> in order to keep more people paying tithes to the church, they'll say what people want to hear to get that money in because their God isn't Jehovah. Their God is actually what they want. So anyway, <clears throat> two dreams, one dealing with, um, I could, I could pretty much say the idol Santa Claus. And I'm going to play, um, a clip from, a, I think it's a video. It's called the church of great tribulation. And I talked about Santa Claus in that it's part six, the church of great tribulation, part six. Let me play that clip right here. I was taught not only in my home about Santa Claus and the things that go along with it, like be naughty and nice and, and, you know, all the different things about Santa Claus. But if you be good, Santa Claus will come to see you and bring a reward. In a child's mind, Santa Claus is a God or becomes a God. I was taught that in my home. Here's the big issue. Not only was I taught that in my home, uh, it was taught in school. And finally, we'll get around to saying the church supported it. To the point that I've seen ministers in, you know, ministers that, are, that stand in pulpits dressed as Santa Claus. Well, Santa Claus is, let's just, let's go down the make-believe line. Santa Claus is a figment of our imagination that some people have put more effort into teaching their children about than God. But Santa Claus isn't quite so innocent. Um, you can trace Santa Claus back. There's a couple stops along the way that you can make. Um, one is a, a Norse god. Um, but, but you can actually go all the way back to Babylon and Nimrod and all this stuff is connected. For those of you that are not in the United States, I just want you to know that it's a huge deal here in the United States. If you are a person, let's say, for example, if you're a Christian, and you want to separate yourself from this world and separate yourself from idols and separate yourself from the traditions of men, etc., etc., come Christmas time, you're going to be in a room by yourself. Because most churches, most people, etc., celebrate Santa Claus and say, today is the Lord's day. 
the day as he was born. Very few people are saying, to heck with Santa Claus and all this Christmas junk. Let me just deal with the Savior, Jesus Christ. That's pretty much how it is. I looked up some scripture that I wanted to share. These are Old Testament scriptures. In um, in Isaiah 47, I'm going to begin reading at verse 6. It goes from verse 6 to 9. At the beginning of verse 6, I want to just read this first part and then explain just a tad. Uh, God is speaking. <clears throat> he said, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance. I have given them into thine hand. And when, when you say thine hand, thine is actually talking about the daughter of the Chaldeans. A child of the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans back in the day, the Chaldeans were Babylon, Babylonian. So the daughter of Babylon or mystery Babylon. Lord, show me we're mystery Babylon. So God is frustrated with Christians. And I believe last night, my dreams last night was showing me some of the issues that God has with Christians in the United States. They have idols of their heart. Their God is their belly. They won't, they won't, they won't. They try to keep up with the Joneses. They try to get the next best thing, the next greatest thing. And if they were to somehow ever manage to get all that they wanted, they might serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Might. But he's last after their idols of their heart. And if you were to talk to somebody, um, <clears throat> regular old Joe, Christian somebody, and say, how about we just drop Santa Claus from this year and just deal directly with Jesus Christ? They'd be like, what do we do about the Christmas parade? How do we, what do we do with all the candy that we're supposed to give to the kids and the presents and stuff like that? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm serious. That's how it is. So let me go back. <clears throat> Isaiah 47. I was wroth with my people. That's God speaking. I have polluted mine inheritance. I given them and given them into thine hand. Given my people into mystery Babylon's hands or into the daughter of the Chaldeans' hands. Thou didst show them no mercy. I'm telling you, persecution is coming. And there will be no mercy on Christians here in these United States. For some of what I've just said. Upon the ancient hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. And thou sayest, I should, this is what Babylon is saying, or the daughter of the Chaldean is saying to themselves now. <clears throat> I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thine heart, neither didst remember the latter end. Therefore, hear now this. Thou that are given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that saith in thine heart, I am and none else beside me. I'm the superpower Nobody is equal to me. That's what this country is saying. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I have loss of children. That's the way this country thinks. I'm not going to lose anybody. I'm the greatest. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon thee in their perfection, for the multitude of thy sorceries, and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. And you can basically say, you can say <clears throat> at one point in time back in the Old Testament, about 1 Kings 18, 19, or 21, Jehu, it may have been in 2 Kings 9 or 8 or 9, something like that. But anyway, Jehu said, talking about Jezebel, that there's not going to be any peace to your mother with her whoredoms uh, is gone, Jezebel. Well, anyway, this false country here, this United States, has a multitude of sorceries and enchantments. It's witchcraft and enchantments. That's what's going on. <clears throat> the Lord is not happy. If you're hearing this, I'm telling you, man, this is the first official time that I'm speaking as a result of hearing from the Lord on the 14th. I'm telling you, there is a lot of idols 
laying around that we play with that we need to get them out of here. Separate yourself from this world. Separate yourself from these things, etc. In Ezekiel 14, I mentioned this earlier. <clears throat> then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Shall I be inquired of at all by them? They have their idols in their heart. Their goals, their desires, their, their appetite for things. Oh, this is great. That's great. Santa Claus, give me Halloween, Easter, bunny, Easter eggs, Semiramis. Um, you can relate Christmas all the way back to Nimrod. Are they even going to call on me? That's what God's saying. He says, therefore, speak unto them and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and things, man, his, there's nothing new under sun according to um, Solomon in Ecclesiastes. So what has happened before with Israel can happen again. And what's happened ha is happening again. Thus saith the Lord God, every man that of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the summing block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Estranged. You know, you can have an estranged spouse. You can be married to Christ, right? And then if you go and you play around with some other stuff, that's that's adultery. Or a separation between you and your spouse, Jesus Christ. Anyway, you see where I'm going, see what's happening. In Isaiah 10.10, 10, it says, as my hand hath found the kingdoms, the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria. If you go in there, you can see some things in Isaiah 10 that allude um, to us. And then finally, in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 6, 16, I want to just share this. In what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of God, excuse me, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. So if you're the temple of God and he dwells in you and he walks in you, what agreement do, does the temple of God have with idols? Idols of the heart, your appetite, the things that you really want more than you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I got to get this. I got to get my kids through school. I got to get this set up. I got to get that set up. I got to do this. I got to do that. All these different little idols within people's hearts, desires, etc. Uh, keeping up with the Joneses, etc. Anything that interferes between you and the Lord Jesus Christ, you and God, Jehovah. You can pretty much classify them similarly together. He says you are estranged from him, man. So, like, people say I'm a Christian, but when you when you diagnose and when you dial in and you realize if these if you say you're a Christian and you're estranged from your God, you're estranged from Jesus Christ, your spouse. What are you? Well, you're estranged. That's for sure. Folks, we're going to pay a very heavy price. The Christians within the United States are going to be persecuted. I have seen where they're going to be tied up and whipped in front of other people, and the other people are going to sit there and enjoy it like it's amusement. They're going to be killed. They're going to be headed, etc., etc. And as I just read, the lady of all kingdoms who thinks she's the only superpower on earth, I'm going to say it's the United States because that's what the Lord has shown me, Babylon. 
Babylon's going to do it to you. You're going, man. The United States military is going to be used against us. There's going to be mercenaries go around in white vans. Check out white vans on my site. Just do a search on the little hourglass. Hourglass, not the hourglass, the magnifying glass, and look for white vans. Mercenaries hired and working for independent companies are going to go out to round people up. There's FEMA camps all over this nation. And I'm telling you, last night, by God, the first night that he could show me something to teach about. And I thought I was going to, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought I was going to talk about the foundations of the faith being built upon the doctrine of the apostles. That's exactly what I thought I was going to talk about. And here I am talking about your idols. The things that have estranged you from your God. So that it's lip service when you say you're Christian. And we're going to pay dearly for this. We are going to pay dearly. So if you say, well, Byron, what are you teaching me? I'm teaching you that judgment, Psalm 89, you read Psalm 89. For those who not who do not do as they're supposed to, they will receive judgment in this life. I'm not saying that you're not going to... Um, be with God later. I'm not saying that you're not going to be, say, uh, caught up to meet the Lord in the air or after your death in persecution, you can be resurrected to be with the Lord. I'm saying, if you look at I think it's Psalms 89. I'll check it and make sure I correct it on the screen. If not, but those that are the seed of Jesus Christ will pay or will receive judgment in this life. I've forgotten exactly how it reads, but it'll be on the screen for you. It's coming. Now, out there in the world, you got false teachers and false prophets saying we're going to be raptured out, and some of them have their idols. Some of them have their desires, their belly. They're looking for money. They're saying what you want to hear so you'll pay them, help them. One of them the other day, somebody <laughs> mentioned this to me. They're getting their channel family to help them somehow with a donkey. Anyway, that's what the Lord gave me last night. Idols, Santa Claus. I'm going to put also a link in the description box. Um, I think the name of the video is America's Occult Holidays. I believe it is. It's by a guy named Doc... Um, I've forgotten his name Doc Marquis and he may have passed away already I, I don't know if the link is still active but I'll I'll try to find it anyway um, I'm going to let you go that's what the Lord gave me it's time for soul searching it's time to remove these idols this playing around like I'm, 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 I don't care what God thinks or nothing like that I'm going to play with Santa Claus this coming year I'm going to I'm going to mess around with Halloween and I'm going to chase the Easter Bunny around with all their eggs and fertility goddess things. And, you know, stuff's the cultic. Anyway, and then also the idols of our heart. The things that are in our heart, the things that cause us to not serve the Lord. But we, we have to get these things accomplished first. Then we think, okay, now I'll serve the Lord. I'll let you go.